Hi everyone, it's me Thriller Teller back again with another horror story. Hope everyone is doing fine and having a great new year. So, today's episode's format is a little different. I'm going to tell you a story and in the end I'm going to reveal if it was a true story or just fiction. Also, if you'd like to submit your true story or fictional story, please send them to my email address listed in the description. So let's jump right into it. During the summer of 1983, in a quiet town near Minneapolis, Minnesota, the police found a severely burned body of a woman in her small farmhouse. The most horrific thing was that her body was found inside the kitchen stove. Not only that, but a video camera was also found in the kitchen, set up on a tripod, pointing at the oven. However, when the police checked the camera, there was no tape found inside at the time. Although the scene was originally labeled as homicide by police, an unmarked VHS tape was later discovered at the bottom of the farm's well. Despite its worn condition and the fact that it contained no audio, police were still able to view the contents of the tape. It depicted a woman recording herself in front of a video camera seemingly using the same camera that the police found in the kitchen. After positioning the camera to include both her and her kitchen stove in its view, she turned on the oven, opened the door, crawled inside, and then closed the door behind her. After eight minutes into the video, the oven could be seen shaking violently. At this point, thick black smoke emanated from it. For the remaining 45 minutes of the video, until the batteries in the camera died, it remained in its stationary position. To avoid disturbing the local community, the police never released any information about the tape or even the fact that it was found. Police were also not able to determine who put the tape in the well. So. What do you think guys? Is it a true story or just fiction? Any guesses? Well, if you go by some comments on websites like creepypasta.com, then no, it isn't. However, this is based on a real story. The oven murder refers to the murder of Hilka Saarinen, born 1st November 1927 in Finland in December 1960. The event is one of Finland's best known cases of homicide and the killer has never been officially identified. Hilka Saarinen was last seen alive in December 1960, aged 33 years. She lived together with her husband, Ponti Franz Saarinen, in an old large wooden house, her childhood home which she had inherited from her grandparents. The Saarinen couple had five children who due to family trouble and the father's violent tendencies were adopted by the state and placed in foster homes. According to the children and village neighbors, Punti was extremely jealous and violent towards Hilka while under the influence of alcohol and that he had repeatedly threatened to kill his wife in a way that could not be traced. On Christmas Day 1960, Hilka and Punti, eldest son, arrived to visit his parents' house for the holidays, together with his schoolmate, one day earlier than he had previously said. They found the front door unlocked, so they crossed the entry room and entered the foyer. At this time, Punti emerged from the large kitchen to the fire, locking the door behind him. He blocked the boy's way, wondering aloud at their early arrival. When the son asked where his mother was, Punti told she had left while he had been sleeping. At the son's suggestion that Hilka might be in a local house where she had previously worked, Punti replied, she's never there. Later that night, when it was dark, the boys went to fetch more bedclothes from the master bedroom located behind the kitchen. When the son asked why the kitchen was dark, his father said 
the lamp was broken. They walked through the kitchen in the narrow streak of light coming from the doorways of the foyer and the master bedroom. However, the boys saw that all the miscellaneous junk that had accumulated on top of the large oven that hadn't been used over the years had been thrown over the floor. The father said he had been cleaning up, presumably in the dark. Even though the master bedroom and the foyer were lit, also the knuckles of his one hand had been scraped. The father had closely followed the boy's movements and acted nervously. Because of this, the schoolmate went home early. The son let the matter be, and unfortunately, he never saw his mother since that day. As the years passed, the son visited the home every now and then, staying a couple of days at the most. He also observed the house and the area around it. He inspected the basement at the end of the house and the outdoor toilet and its surroundings a short distance apart. He was puzzled by the disappearance of the pile of sand that had previously been in the front yard of the cow barn. As the time passed, the boy began to suspect that his mother was no longer alive. After inspecting the surroundings, he began inspecting the building's plank floors, its large attic, and the stone foundation that the building rested upon. But he couldn't find any clues. Eventually, in 1966, the son sent a letter to the police. I suspect that my father knows more about the disappearance of my mother than he has told me. He has clearly opened the oven and shut it again. However, the oven had not been used in seven to eight years before this. When I arrived, my father was cleaning in the dark even though another room was lit. I think the oven should be dismantled. My father could do anything. Sadly, the letter was not noted. Later, the son wrote an article in the May 1967 issue of Alama magazine, where he suspected his father of having murdered his mother. Later, when the father and the son met, the father told the son to mind his own business. A staggering 12 years after Hilka went missing, in 1972, new investigations had been ordered to go through old, unsolved cases, and the son was contacted again. As such, on November 27, 1972, authorities arrived at the house with authorization to dismantle the family's oven. The husband was moved to the police station before the police started to dismantle the oven, finding it filled with sand. In one meter's depth, they found the mummified head of a woman. After digging some more, they found a foot and finally, the entire body. The eldest son identified the body as belonging to his mother, Hilka Saarinen. Despite that level of evidence, the local court stated that the husband hadn't caused Hilka's death on purpose. As such, they sentenced him to a pitiful eight years in prison for severe assault. However, he only served a single year because the district and Supreme Court overturned the sentence, stating that neither the cause nor the manner of Hilka's death was known. They also stated that he couldn't be sentenced after the amount of time that has passed since Hilka's disappearance. Because of this, Hilka's husband was returned to the house, which had been empty all that time, and he lived there alone until his death on August 1st, 1986. Despite that, there does remain one question that makes this a mystery. Did the husband kill Hilka? Or was he actually innocent? Or did she do it to herself, just like in the creepypasta? I guess we'll never know. So that was today's story. If you're into horror stories, I highly suggest subscribing to this channel and I will see you soon with another horror story. Until then, bye!